Ryan Nordhaus, long-standing member of the ensemble. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm doing just fine. Just out in the middle of nowhere, waiting for things to get better. I'm sure that'll be any day now. Any day now. We obviously go back quite a ways. Your band was one of the very, very first ones that I was asked to play in. So that was super exciting for me. I remember it was our first gig at the Brooklyn Lyceum. Oh, we're playing in a, a converted bathhouse. This is, this is my scene. The atmosphere is always really fun and it's always very funny and the people are awesome. So this is, to me, it's a pretty winning combination. I'm wondering if you have a specific approach toward playing in this band. When you give me the music, I think there's a lot of swearing. There's the raising of fists. Why? Why? <laughs> in terms of playing what's actually on the page, that's one aspect that has its own life. And then the other part, which is like really unique, is the fact that you will just give me space that just says like, play or just go and I, I don't get to do that anywhere else and I never have there's such freedom in that and such trust and I appreciate that I like to sort of contrast with what I know is coming I don't know why I would write anything specific in those moments if if you're just going to play like that like <laughs> no to be writing. because it is different every time and it's still so uniquely you every time I can never remember what I did last time so I wonder what's going through her head right now probably thinking what's for lunch. There's been a couple gigs where, where I've, I've wondered what's going through your head. And <laughs> that wasn't my fault. Yeah, that, that definitely wasn't your fault. With respect to this particular record, if you have a favorite track. To me, it's the overall arc. The capacity to actually listen to the album for, from start to finish, I think is a really beautiful gift. So I think it's just a really wonderful way of absorbing the message, but also the, just the most powerful as well. So each part stands on their, their own anyway. I mean, I think to me, finding a way to make them all work together is really challenging. I know when I've put together you know, my own albums or other people's albums, I spend so much time trying to get the order just so. You know, so it's a really important um, aspect. You know, we're billing this as a protest record. I'm wondering if that has any particular significance. Yeah, I mean, I've lived here 17 years and to me, I feel like a, a witness. I mean, especially lately, it's just sort of mind boggling. It is absolutely protest music and more timely than ever. The first time that I experienced the I can see my country from here, mm. I couldn't make the gig or the rehearsals, but I, I actually was in the audience. And that was really interesting to be on the other side of that. I mean, there's so much in it. There's like the, you know, like the power and the, and the anger, you know, but there's also the beauty in it as well. So I just think it very much encapsulates all the, all the elements that are going on right now. It just sucks so hard that like you could be here for almost two decades and still feel like you're on the outside of it. To be an expat is really, it, it's sort of almost being a witness in both countries. I've always had a, a hatred for politics because it's just so awful but it sort of gets to the point that you can't sort of stick your head in the sand about it. I need to uh, have the energy to try and uplift others. The only thing I can do is really share some Facebook posts and donate money and uh, you know, just, you know, play this music. That's sort of my, my contribution, which is incredibly small, but all I can manage at this point. Is the band that you have now what you had in mind or is, has this been sort of a bit of a surprise? You know, from the second I was serious about music, I knew I was a large ensemble composer in what we'll call the jazz vocabulary. My first compositions were for big band. Wow. They're terrible. They'll never see the light of day, but I do have them in a box somewhere. Excellent. But yeah, the, the politics that I think that comes with an expanding awareness of oneself and one's place in, in the world. Yeah, I basically knew at 15 I wanted to be broke for the rest of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering if there's, if there's things that you feel people should know. I really enjoy being a section player. I think, I think there's an art to it. Obviously intonation is incredibly important, but articulation and phrasing with the the lead player and dynamics, it's just a very different mindset and skill set to when I'm, I'm, you know, playing my own music or being my own band leader. To hear like an entire brass section with a unified concept and a unified breath really is, mm -hmm. is just, it is one of the most f***ing magical things. I always feel like I'm missing out on something. Yeah, you are. I yeah. know, I know. I <laughs> In our next interview, we'll, we'll have you tell the story of the drubbing 
that I took the last time we, we played Rummy. <laughs> oh, you loved it. You yeah, loved it. Embarrassing. Anyway, I miss you. I and, miss you uh, too. We will do this again soon, hopefully. Yes. Excellent. Okay.